सो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई होप यू ऑल आर सीटेड नाउ सो येस्टरडे वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डायरेक्टली एक्टिंग सिंपथेटिक ड्रग और डायरेक्टली एक्टिंग एड्रीनर्जिक ड्रग सो टूडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विथ लेट्स मेक अडिंग टूडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विथ इनडायरेक्टली एक्टिंग ड्रग्स एंड मिक्स एक्टिंग ड्रग्स today we will be starting with indirectly acting and mixed acting adrenergic drugs now what was the mechanism of action of these drugs so this is the first slide of the day okay so let's see so let's see what is the mechanism of action of these drug we will write that indirectly acting drug they increase the release of catecholamines they increase the release of catecholamines from nerves so we will write they will increase the release of catecholamine from the nerves what about mixed acting they will also do the same they will also release increase the release plus they will also act on receptor and they can directly stimulate receptor like directly acting drug so they have both action they increase the release as well as they can directly stimulate the receptor okay now let's see how do these drugs they increase the release but before that let's write the names of the drug very simple and very few drugs okay very simple and very few drugs are there you will write mat 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 and here you will write me mat me m for modafinil a for amphetamine and remember amphetamine is a group amphetamine group then one substance which is present in food items like cheese and all we will discuss tyramine tyramine here you will write mix acting me fentermine and lastly we will write a drug ephedrine and in bracket you can write one modification of ephedrine pseudo ephedrine one modification we can write pseudo ephedrine okay so modafinil so these are indirectly acting drugs and these are mixed acting drugs indirectly acting drug they increase the release mixed acting drug they will increase the release as well as they will stimulate the receptor okay so this was the first slide of the day this was the first slide of the day adrenergic drugs indirectly acting and mixed acting directly acting we have already covered yesterday indirectly acting drugs they will increase the release mixed acting they will increase the release plus they will be also acting on receptor mnemonic is mat me m a t mat m e m e okay mat me now let's start this was the first slide let's see how do they increase the release of catecholamine let's see what is their mechanism of action these drugs suppose this is a nerve and in nerve we have catecholamines we have catecholamines stored in vesicles these drugs what they will do they will enter into the nerve they will enter into the nerve can you tell me by which transporter either dat or net okay by the same transporter they will enter into the nerve and then they will enter into the vesicles can you tell me which transporter was required for entering into vesicle vmat if you remember vmat and when they enter into the vesicle 
they displace catecholamine and these catecholamines are released so can we say it will release norepinephrine dopamine etc so, okay so they will cause increase in displaced catecholamine and it will get released okay beta now this whole process is known as can we say it is going inside the neuron so it is known as reverse diffusion reverse diffusion and displacement reverse diffusion and displacement of catecholamines very simple okay it's very simple i hope so they will cause release now i want to ask you one question now i want to ask you one question just think logically and tell me why okay that when you have taken amphetamine on day 1 very good response was there on day 2 and day 3 there is totally loss of effect of amphetamine amphetamine has stopped producing its effect can you tell me why so you will write that these drugs have one drawback and just tell me why that these drugs they show these drugs they show rapid loss of effect all these drugs they show rapid loss of effect can you tell me why yes you are absolutely right it is very easy to release them but synthesis will take time so they show very rapid loss of effect the reason is because of depletion of stores because of depletion of stores in nerves do you agree with this point so these drugs they show rapid loss of effect very good now you will write that what do you mean by the word loss of effect remember loss of effect is known as tolerance so can we say they show rapid tolerance so these drugs will show rapid tolerance and remember rapid tolerance is also known as tachyphylaxis rapid tolerance is also known as tachyphylaxis so can you tell me why these drugs are showing tachyphylaxis the reason you will write is because of depletion of stores because of depletion of stores so when you will give this drug within 3 2 3 uh, days their effect will be lost i hope it's simple now i want to ask you one last question think logically and tell me that indirectly acting drugs like amphetamines modafinil they show complete tachyphylaxis complete tachyphylaxis means complete loss of effect while mixed acting drugs they show incomplete tachyphylaxis now what do you mean by this word there is incomplete loss of effect can you tell me the reason why mixed acting drug their effect will not be completely lost why mixed acting drug their effect will not be completely lost because because mixed acting drug apart from releasing catecholamine mixed acting drug they can directly stimulate the receptor also yes you are absolutely right so mixed acting drug they can directly stimulate the receptor as well very good so i'll just repeat what is the mechanism of action some students have joined these drugs they will enter into the nerve these drugs they will enter into the nerve one which is known as reverse diffusion 
then they in go inside the vesicles by vmat transporter and they displace catecholamine because they call displacement of catecholamine these catecholamines like norepinephrine dopamine will be released will be released okay leave two pages beta so let's talk about now individual drugs let's talk about now individual drugs so can you tell me the first drug we have written was modafinil modafinil you'll write the first drug we have written is modafinil now we have a new drug r modafinil r modafinil is r enantiomer and it is longer acting and it is longer acting okay now now we will write that modafinil is used now can we say can we say this modafinil is given orally first point and it has a very good cns penetration it has a very good cns penetration now just think and tell me that if i will increase sympathetic discharge just imagine the dog is after you you become very alert what will happen to your sleep would you like to sleep at that time when the dog is after you dog is chasing you to kill your life would you like to sleep at that time if there is increase in sympathetic discharge would you like to sleep at that time sympathetic discharge remember it causes decrease in sleep or it will increase alertness okay it will decrease sleep and it will increase alertness because of this reason this modafinil is the drug of choice for narcolepsy it is the drug of choice for narcolepsy second you will write you will write shift workers i will tell you the reason why shift workers and obstructive sleep apnea the people who are in obstruct obstructive sleep apnea cannot sleep at night okay shift workers they also don't sleep at night in narcolepsy what happens in all these three condition the patient has daytime sleepiness the patient has daytime sleepiness don't you think if a person is driving a car and suddenly sleeps it will lead to accidents hence to prevent this daytime sleepiness in this condition drug of choice is modafinil okay so you will write to prevent daytime sleepiness we give this drug okay to prevent daytime sleepiness in narcolepsy shift workers obstructive sleep apnea we give modafinil i hope it's clear to you okay okay on this condition if there is a daytime sleepiness which can lead to which can lead to some accidents you can give this drug okay now let's move it is approved only in these three conditions let's come to next drug let's come to the next drug you will write amphetamines amphetamines okay yes it will show lot of loss of tolerance but we don't prescribe modafinil for very long term basis okay now amphetamines is a group okay amphetamine is a group and again we will write it has more action in cns as compared to periphery okay second point it is known as 
CNS stimulant and it increases sympathetic activity in CNS. It increases sympathetic activity in CNS. Okay. In CNS. Next point we will write that in CNS it increases the level of norepinephrine. It increases the level of dopamine. You will write that it also increases the level of serotonin. It also increases the level of serotonin. Now, let's imagine if there is sympathetic discharge which is increased in your body, would you like to sleep at that time? Would you like to sleep at that time? Yes or no? So, it will decrease sleep. Every It will decrease sleep. Second point, if there is increase in sympathetic discharge, would you like to eat something at that time when dog is after you chasing you? Would you love to eat at that time? So no, it will suppress appetite. Why? Because it has anorectic action. Anorexia means decrease in appetite. Okay. Third point we will write, sir, if the dog is after you, you are chasing to stay, is chasing to save your life. What will happen to your attention span or concentration span? If there is increase in sympathetic activity, you will not love to sleep. You will not love to eat, but what will happen to your attention span? Can we say it will increase your attention span? It will increase your attention span. Okay. So amphetamine group. Okay. So my question from you is as a student, when you want to abuse this drug, when do you want to abuse this drug? Students very commonly, they abuse this drug, but it is a very dangerous drug to take before exams. So tomorrow you have an exam. You haven't purchased your book yet and you don't have any time to sleep. You don't have any time to eat. And first time you are reading a subject, your attention span will be very good. So students, they generally abuse this drug. But remember, you should not abuse this drug. It's a very dangerous drug. So as it is decreases sleep, it can be given in narcolepsy. But you will write. Drug of choice is modafinil. Drug of choice is modafinil. Okay. It is given as an anti obesity drug. Anti obesity drug. Okay. And you will write as it increases attention span, amphetamines are the drug of choice for ADHD. They are the drug of choice for ADHD. Now, what do you mean by the word ADHD? No, you should not take. Okay. It will lead to cardiac arrhythmias. I will tell you shortly before you can reach your exam center. You may die also. So ADHD stands for attention deficit. Hyperkinetic disorder, attention deficit, hyperkinetic disorder. Okay. So let's see which drug is among amphetamine group is considered as a drug of choice for ADHD. ADHD is a disease which is generally seen in small children. Their concentration span is with small child. His attention span or concentration span is very poor. That child cannot sit at one place. That child cannot read. Why it cannot read? Because the concentration span is very poor. So don't you think those children will be having very poor academic performances? So let's see what are the drugs we have for ADHD. You'll write the first drug 
is amphetamines and among amphetamine group the drug of choice for adhd is you will write methylphenidate this is a very commonly asked question it's a very commonly asked question you will find this question very commonly so what is the drug of choice for adhd methylphenidate methylphenidate is a type of amphetamine okay methylphenidate is a type of amphetamine other drugs we will write as dextroamphetamine lis dex same amphetamine a for amphetamine okay and methyl amphetamine a for again amphetamine okay so the only drug which is not having amphetamine word is methylphenidate and that methylphenidate is considered as a drug of choice okay methylphenidate is considered as a drug of choice any other drug for adhd yes we will write ectomoxetine ectomoxetine where ectomoxetine is given you are seeing a and t word is coming okay so ectomoxetine is given in adhd plus torrid syndrome sometimes these children have tics tics are multiple movement repetitive movement so a and t and lastly you can write clonidine and clonidine is also given for adhd with torrid syndrome but you will write that these two drugs are not cns stimulant which drug was cns stimulant which drug was cns stimulant amphetamine was cns stimulant okay Uh, amphetamine was cns stimulant these drugs are not cns stimulant okay so these are the drugs for adhd let's talk about the side effects of amphetamines let's talk about the side effects of amphetamines very simple and easy just think logically side effect of amphetamines okay the first side effect you will write that amphetamines they cause psychosis amphetamines they produce psychosis okay because of this reason one amphetamine got banned that amphetamine name was pimoline and you will find this question which amphetamine got banned because of psychosis you can write pimoline okay amphetamines they produce cardiac arrhythmias amphetamines can produce cardiac arrhythmias in very high dose in very high dose they can lead to epilepsy or seizures not in low dose in high dose they can lead to seizure in low dose they don't cause seizure okay next point amphetamines are the drug of abuse amphetamines are the drug of abuse or they are addictive drug because of this reason two amphetamines they are banned the smugglers they generally use this amphetamine those amphetamine you will write i hope you have heard about a drug meth amphetamine and mdma mdma although all amphetamines are drug of abuse but these two drugs they are very commonly used by smugglers you know drug smugglers and smugglers they don't call it as a methamphetamine or something like this it's a very complex name to tell smugglers they call them as 
एक्टेसी और रेव ड्रग्स और यू कैन राइट द कॉमन नेम और स्ट्रीट नेम आर क्रिस्चन क्रिस्चन तो स्मगलर्स हु जनरली प्रोवाइड दिस ड्रग टू देर कस्टमर्स ओके दे आर यस यू हैव सीन ब्रेकिंग बैड या एब्सोल्युटली राइट ओके सो आई होप ब्रेकिंग बैड पेज यू इन योर फार्माकोलॉजी सो ब्रेकिंग बैड यू हैव सीन सो so these are drug of abuse last point with amphetamine we will write that amphetamine are also performance we will write that amphetamines are also amphetamines are also performance enhancing drugs okay just a moment just a moment yeah so amphetamines are also performance enhancing drugs because of this reason these amphetamines which are performance enhancing drugs they are banned in sports they are banned in sports okay they are banned in sports and any drug which is banned in sports are also known as dope drug they are also known as dope drugs now can you tell me why they are performance enhancing drugs suppose you are playing chess or suppose you are doing shooting don't you think your concentration span is very good more enhanced as compared to a normal person don't you think now you can easily beat a person so that is why this drug is giving undue advantage undue advantage in sports okay what is the treatment of adhd we will discuss in cns topic okay central nervous system okay cns topic so they are banned in sports and with amphetamine you will write amphetamine poisoning amphetamine poisoning now in amphetamine poisoning remember the patient has increase in sympathetic activity like patient will be having midriasis hypertension second point patient will be having psychosis and when amphetamine comes in urine it can lead to golden color urine it can lead to golden color urine okay it can lead to golden color urine that okay so golden color urine let's see what is the treatment of amphetamine poisoning the treatment of amphetamine poisoning is the drug of choice for the treatment of amphetamine poisoning is ammonium chloride the drug of choice for the treatment of amphetamine poisoning is ammonium chloride reason this amphetamine is a basic molecule basic drug and ammonium chloride is given for forced acidic diuresis forced acidic diuresis now remember one concept for basic drug poisoning we change the ph of urine acidic okay if there is any poisoning of a basic drug we change the ph of urine acidic and if there is some acidic drug poisoning we change the ph of urine basic because the drug in opposite ph media becomes more water soluble and easily excreted out in urine so amphetamine poisoning we give which drug ammonium chloride and it will help in excretion of amphetamine 
it will increase excretion of amphetamine okay yes so sympathetic discharge will also beta cause arrhythmia you are absolutely right second point you can give you can give one drug chlorpromazine if somebody will ask you which drug is given chlorpromazine chlorpromazine is an anti psychotic plus alpha blocker alpha blocker will decrease sympathetic activity alpha blocker will reduce sympathetic activity so if you want to give a drug you can give chlorpromazine okay so this is about amphetamine amphetamine is an important topic for you you must know about amphetamine now before going to the third drug tyramine i want to give you the list of anti obesity drugs okay let's write the list of anti obesity drug let's write the list of anti obesity drugs okay now anti obesity drug first you will write approved drugs after that i will be telling you certain drugs have been banned approved drug the first drug you will write is mefentermine plus topiramate if you remember mefentermine i will be telling you now is a sympathetic drug topiramate is an anti epileptic drug bupropion anti smoking remember bupropion i told you anti smoking also zonisamide again one anti epileptic drug okay zonisamide now question comes which two anti epileptic drugs causes promote weight loss which two anti epileptic drug promote weight loss topiramate and zonisamide we will discuss in epilepsy next point you will write liraglutide liraglutide is glp1 analog what is glp1 for a moment you will not under, you will not we will not go into detail just remember it is also anti diabetic drug glp you can write glucagon like peptide glucagon like peptide it is also used in diabetes mellitus okay yes you are absolutely right it's a type of incretin fourth you will write orlistat and cetilistat you are seeing li world is coming and stat world is coming these drugs are oral lipase stat means inhibitor oral lipase inhibitors and the last drug you will write is olestra olestra is a non digestible cooking oil it's a non digestible cooking oil so this is the list of the drugs yes it is an anti diabetes mellitus drug yes you are absolutely right let's write certain banned drugs let's talk about certain drugs which have been banned the first drug you will write is fenfluramine and second you will write sibutramine fenfluramine increases the level of norepinephrine in brain sibutramine increases the level of norepinephrine in brain increases the level of serotonin in brain and it is also beta 3 agonist 
it is also a beta 3 agonist now next drug you will write i will tell you why they have been banned third drug you will write is lorcaserin how to remember so you are seeing serine word is coming it means it is some serotonin analog there is one receptor of serotonin 5-HT2C receptor and when you stimulate this 2C receptor it decreases appetite now this drug has been banned 4 months back and why all these drugs have been banned the first two drugs you will write they have been banned because they were increasing they were causing cardiac valve defect the main reason why they have been banned because they were causing cardiac valve defect and this was increasing the risk of cancers like colorectal cancer pancreatic cancer okay colorectal cancer and pancreatic cancer and the last drug i have already told you when we were discussing drug for smoking cessation remona band remona band and remona band you know is cannabinoid agonist can you tell me the reason why it got banned if you have read your notes increase suicide increase suicides okay no diuretics are not used for smoking uh, your weight loss no they are abused as a weight loss abusive drugs but they are not approved done let's finish now this adrenergic drugs okay let's finish now adrenergic drugs Second next drug we will write MAT mat T4 tyramine T4 tyramine yes suicide depression you are absolutely right tyramine remember tyramine is not a drug it is rather present in certain food products it is present in food items like just suppose you are going to italy or spain you are having a cheese burst pizza with lot of meat on it and you are having red wine along with it specially cinciati wine okay so it is present in cheese meat and red wine now the problem with tyramine is normally when you eat tyramine eat this food tyramine is not absorbed normally this tyramine is not absorbed from git okay don't draw this diagram just to tell you how suppose this is git on our git we have one enzyme mao a enzyme mouse stand for mono amine oxidase when you eat a tyramine this mono amine oxidase degrade this amine tyramine so this mao enzyme it is degraded by mao a enzyme it is degraded by mao a enzyme okay mouse stand for mono amine oxidase okay so the problem occurs when a person eat this food with mao a inhibitors when a person will eat a food with mao a inhibitor don't you think this tyramine will come into the blood and this tyramine will increase sympathetic activity this tyramine will increase sympathetic activity and this increase in sympathetic activity because of tyramine can we say that there will be increase in bp there will be increase in bp and this is known as hypertensive crisis suddenly the bp will shoot up and this reaction is known as 
cheese reaction and you know why cheese you know why cheese reaction so my question from you is my question from you is which drug produces cheese reaction which drug produces cheese reaction tyramine first option second option is mao inhibitor what should be your answer which drug produces cheese reaction tyramine or mao inhibitor tyramine or mao inhibitors the answer is mao inhibitor tyramine is not a drug mao inhibitors are a drug okay so mao inhibitor so let's write few drugs which are mao inhibitors so those mao inhibitor you can write T I N T pint, pint, phenylzine. I will tell you which drug you have to remember among them. Iso, carboxazid, nialamide, and tranil, cipromine, tranil. cipromine now remember this one and last one has been asked from you but it will be a old question nowadays rarely asked the name of mao inhibitor because now they are becoming out of use see beta why cheese reaction occurs normally when you eat tyramine tyramine is degraded in our git by mao enzyme but if you will give mao inhibitor see this part if you will give mao inhibitor by this drug this tyramine will come into the blood and you know that tyramine causes release of epinephrine from the nerves because of release of epinephrine from the nerves tyramine will lead to increase in sympathetic activity that increase in sympathetic activity will sh suddenly shoot up the bp and this sudden increase in bp is known as cheese reaction okay mainly by mao a beta mao a mao b is present in brain okay now what is the treatment of cheese reaction the drug of choice for the treatment of cheese reaction you will write is fentolamine the drug of choice for the treatment of cheese reaction is fentolamine fentolamine is an alpha blocker Fentolamine is an alpha blocker. You know that alpha receptor causes vasoconstriction when norepinephrine will be released. Vasoconstriction will be there. BP will shoot up. Block alpha receptors. Okay, block alpha receptors. Okay. So this is about tyramine. Let's write two last two drugs. Few few lines among them. You'll write mefentermine. mefentermine is both indirectly acting and it also stimulates alpha and beta receptor okay indirectly means it increases the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine now this mefentermine you will write is an approved anti obesity drug it is an approved anti obesity drug second point mefentermine is used as a vasopressor like phenylephrine it is also used as a vasopressor like phenylephrine remember spinal anesthesia shock postural hypotension okay next drug ephedrine this is the last drug ephedrine ephedrine same like same like mefentermine you will write first use it is used as a nasal decongestant it 
it is also used as a vasopressor like phenylephrine it is used as a vasopressor like phenylephrine okay vasopressor like phenylephrine now last point you will write that from ephedrine we modified it to form pseudo ephedrine you will write it has less cns penetration less cns penetration second we made nor ephedrine nor ephedrine is also known as phenyl propanol amine phenyl propanol amine okay now these two drugs are also approved as a nasal decongestant these drugs are also known as nasal decongestant but you will write that this pseudo norephedrine was present earlier 10 10 years back this norephedrine or phenyl propanolamine was present in vix action 500 heard about vix action 500 as a nasal decongestant this phenyl propanolamine or norephedrine now has been banned this last drug now has been banned because it was increasing the risk of hemorrhagic stroke because with this drug the bp was shooting very high because of very high blood pressure there was stroke okay so there was stroke so this completes our adrenergic drugs let's talk about the last part of ans anti adrenergic drugs anti adrenergic drug beta nasal decongestant for nasal decongestion or rhinorrhea you don't want that the drug should enter into cns okay beta maria maria basi so a drug should not enter into brain so for nasal decongestion you should remember require a drug which should only act on nose okay so we do you don't want the action on cns for that okay so let's talk about now let's talk about now anti adrenergic drugs okay anti adrenergic drug anti adrenergic drugs they are also known as sympatho lytic drug beta metformin is not used for obesity it promotes weight loss but it is not used for obesity treatment mera background is in research for obesity but it is not approved now anti adrenergic drugs or sympatho lytic drugs okay let's make a heading on separate page now now these anti adrenergic drugs are of two types first you will write is सेंट्रल सिंपथोलाइटिक सेंट्रल सिंपथोलाइटिक कैन यू टेल मी द रीजन वाई बिकॉज दे विल बी एक्टिंग ऑन विच ऑर्गन दे विल बी एक्टिंग ऑन ब्रेन एंड सेकेंड यू विल राइट रिसेप्टर सिंपथेटिक नर्वस सिस्टम रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकर and can you tell me two types of receptors in sympathetic nervous system either these drugs are alpha blocker or these drugs are beta blockers or these drugs are beta blockers either they are alpha blockers or they are beta blockers okay alpha blockers or beta blockers just a moment okay so let's start with 
let's start with a very important topic for you that is central sympatholytic it's a very commonly asked question let's make a heading first central sympatholytics okay and very simple also concept central sympatholytics lytics means to reduce okay first let's understand how do they act what is the mechanism of action of these drugs suppose sir this is brain this is brain i told you that sympathetic discharge starts from brain sympathetic discharge starts from brain and then sympathetic nerves comes into the spinal cord and from spinal cord you know these nerves they arise peripheral nerves preganglionic nerves from thoracic and lumbar spinal region and they act on organs and on organs we have alpha and beta receptor on organs we have alpha and beta receptors now remember first point why these drugs are known as central sympatholytic because they act here because they act on cns first point they act on cns second point in cns you know this is a neuron and this neuron is going to other neurons this neuron is releasing some norepinephrine and this norepinephrine is going on other neurons now remember on presynaptic neuron we have alpha 2 a receptor on presynaptic neurons we have alpha 2 a receptor remember alpha 2 a receptor was presynaptic receptor it was a presynaptic receptor and second point we will write that when you stimulate this alpha 2a receptor when you stimulate this alpha 2a receptor this alpha 2a receptor applies a break it applies a break that means stimulation of alpha 2a receptor will reduce sympathetic discharge from the brain it will reduce sympathetic discharge from the brain hence it is known as auto receptor it is known as auto receptor so why it is known as sympatholytic we will write because they are alpha 2 a agonist because they are alpha 2 a agonist you will write alpha 2 a agonist is a presynaptic auto receptor it is a presynaptic auto receptor and when you stimulate this auto receptor it will decrease sympathetic discharge it will decrease sympathetic discharge okay all nerves have some kind of auto receptor but pharmacologically speaking we have drugs against certain receptor we have to learn about those receptors in detail okay so what is the list of the drugs we have among central sympatholytics okay let's write the list of the drugs among central sympatholytic this list is very important for you write the name of the drugs and all these drugs will be acting on which receptor you know is alpha 2a right as mnemonic cd tag right as mnemonic cd tag c stand for clonidine c stands for clonidine very important for you next dex medito medine again a very commonly asked question what is dexmedetomidine 
तेजानी डीन एल्फा मिथाइल डोपा एल्फा मिथाइल डोपा यू राइट ग्वान फेसिन एंड ग्वान बेंस ग्वान फेसिन एंड ग्वान बेंस ओके यस यस अपर्णा एनी ड्रग विच इंक्रीजेस परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ अ पर्सन विल प्रोवाइड अंड्यू एडवांटेज इन स्पोर्ट सो यस एम्फिटामिन वॉर्स परफॉर्मेंस एनहेंसिंग ड्रग्स नाउ इन दिस होल लिस्ट रिमेंबर वी विल डिस्कस दिस ड्रग क्लोनिडीन एंड दिस एल्फा मिथाइल डोपा इन ग्रेट डिटेल क्वेश्चन कम्स ऑन दीज ड्रग्स इन वेरी ग्रेट डिटेल other drugs we will write one one line about other drugs okay with other drugs we will write one one line what is expected from you okay what is expected from you so first one first question comes what is the action of all these drugs all these drugs are alpha 2a agonist we know this part we know that all these drugs are alpha 2 agonist first dexmedetomidine can we say when you reduce just can we say when you reduce sympathetic discharge in the body you will feel sedated or sleepy you will feel sedated or sleepy so this dexmedetomidine which is a drug d1 it is a sedative drug it is a sedative drug it is given intravenously to produce sedation it is given intravenously to produce sedation in which patient you will write an icu patient and before anesthesia as a pre anesthetic drug okay tizanidine you will write it's a centrally acting muscle relaxant and i will be telling you about this tizanidine in great detail when we will discuss muscle relaxant but question comes which muscle relaxant act on acts on alpha 2a receptor tizanidine you write that this guanfacin is the longest acting drug this guanfacin is the longest acting drug and it is given for tourette syndrome like clonidine it is given for tourette syndrome like clonidine okay like clonidine so let's make a heading a very important drug for you clonidine let's talk about clonidine make a heading clonidine make a heading clonidine okay make a heading everyone clonidine okay now clonidine you will write it is an alpha 2a agonist plus it is also i2 agonist i stands for imidazoline this question has been asked i2 agonist as well as alpha 2 agonist okay now this clonidine decreases central sympathetic discharge
it decreases central sympathetic discharge. Okay. I'll give you after these two drugs, we will take a small break. Okay. After clonidine and alpha methylopa. Now, if you talk about the properties of clonidine, clonidine can be given orally, IV, as well as transdermal patches. This question has been asked. Can we give clonidine as a transdermal patch? I will give you a list of all drugs which are given as a transdermal patch later on. Next point, you will write clonidine is a narrow therapeutic index drug. Now, what do you mean by this word? What do you mean by this word? Okay, narrow therapeutic index drug. Remember, what do you mean by the word therapeutic index? What do you mean by the word therapeutic index? Therapeutic index means safety margin of a drug. This is a concept of general pharma. It is the safety margin of a drug. Okay, it's a safety margin of a drug. Okay, beta. Narrow means it has a very low safety margin. Narrow means it has a very low safety margin. Now remember, any drug which is a narrow therapeutic index drug, it means that drug will be safe drug or unsafe drug. It will be an unsafe drug. That means if you little bit increase the dose of clonidine, it will lead to side effects. Hence, any drug which is an unsafe drug or narrow therapeutic index drug requires monitoring. So that dose should not be increased. So any drug which is an unsafe drug or narrow therapeutic index drug requires monitoring. Okay, beta? It requires monitoring. And last, so it requires monitoring. So these two properties of clonidine, you must remember. Okay? Keeping this thing in mind, let's see the uses of clonidine. Let's see the uses of clonidine. Clonidine is a very important drug for you. Okay? Okay? I'll tell you it. Chalo. Uses. So first use. Clonidine will decrease sympathetic discharge in the body. And remember, when there is high sympathetic discharge, person feels very uncomfortable. Okay? Very disturbed. Okay? So if a person is having disturbed, un, uh, very, uh, the person is feeling very disturbed, uneasy, we can give clonidine to calm a person. So let's see what are all those conditions. So first use of clonidine, clonidine is given for postmenopausal hot flushes. It's a symptom in females, in postmenopausal females, there's flushing. Second, Clonidine is given for hypertension. Clonidine is given for hypertension. Okay. Clonidine is given to control withdrawal of alcohol, smoking and opioids. Okay, so drug withdrawal, we can give clonidine. All any drug withdrawal, you can give clonidine. Then, clonidine is given for diabetic diarrhea. Why? When diarrhea occurs in diabetes, because clonidine acts on alpha 2A receptor in intestine as well. 
and it decreases secretion of sodium and chloride it decreases the secretion of ions like sodium and chloride okay next clonidine is given as an epidural analgesic it has pain relieving property okay epidural analgesic it is given for migraine prophylaxis because it has pain relieving property it is given in adhd now one student was asking me why adhd attention deficit hyperkinetic disorder hd was hyperkinetic disorder this clonidine has a calming effect and it decreases hyperkinesis it decreases hyperkinesis it makes a person calm down okay in diabetic diarrhea we give because in diabetes there is neuropathy neuropathy can lead to secretion of ions and lastly one disease gills de la torret syndrome because in gills de la torret syndrome again it will have calming effect okay again it will have calming effect now how to remember this whole thing you will write the mnemonic pehle halka karo dimag ओके okay. पहले हल्का करो दिमाग ओके इट हैज पेन रिलीविंग प्रॉपर्टी माइग्रेन देर इज हेडेक ओके इन माइग्रेन प्रोफाइल एक्सिस इट इज गिवन वी विल डिस्कस इन माइग्रेन बेटा वी विल डिस्कस इन माइग्रेन इन ए एन एस वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ड्रग्स आफ्टर ए एन एस वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डिजीजेस ओके लाइक वाई माइग्रेन हाउ इट अकर्स कार्डियो वैस्कुलर डिजीज हाउ इट अकर्स सो वाई वी आर गिविंग दिस ड्रग ओके okay i hope so just have a little bit uh, adjustment with the hindi mnemonic i hope some students will find it difficult but uh, you can make your own mnemonics also okay let's talk about the side effects of clonidine side effects of clonidine first you are decreasing sympathetic activity what will happen to blood pressure blood pressure will reduce hypotension okay hypotension then it leads to apnea apnea means respiratory depression in brain respiratory depression in brain because of this reason clonidine is contraindicated in children less than Two years of age, because of the risk of apnea, clonidine is is contraindicated. Clonidine causes dry eyes and dry mouth. Okay, dry eyes, dry mouth. Clonidine causes sedation. And last point, clonidine causes erectile. dysfunction or impotence so how to remember this mnemonic you will write it will create a tragedy for a male person impotency so hard se ho jayenge make a mnemonic hard se make a mnemonic hard se okay because when where it is acting why clonidine causes apnea because where clonidine acts in brain their respiratory centers are also there okay okay the risk of apnea is more seen in children because there is more entry of clonidine okay side effect and last point with clonidine you will write that never stop clonidine 
suddenly in patient. Never stop clonidine suddenly in your patient. Why? I will explain you this point in great detail. Okay? Okay? Now, never stop clonidine suddenly in your patient because it will lead to rebound hypertensive crisis. It will lead to Rebound increase in BP, so much increase in BP that the patient will die. Let's see the reason why. But before that, what is the treatment? If the patient is having rebound increase in BP, give the same drug, give the same drug you were giving for cheese reaction, fentolamine. Give the same drug you were giving for the cheese reaction, fentolamine. Okay. Dry eyes and dry mouth because of sympathetic discharge, eccrine glands, they are supplied by, eccrine glands, they are supplied by sympathetic cholinergic nerves. Okay. Now, let's move ahead. Why clonidine should not be stopped suddenly in your patient? Reason. See, it's a very simple thing. We have discussed that this was a neuron. So, reason we will write here. So, first, let's understand the reason. So this is a neuron and this neuron was having alpha 2 A receptor. Okay. And these are post synaptic receptor. Post synaptic receptor. Okay. Now normally the, when you were stimulating alpha 2 A receptor, the norepinephrine release was not there. Norepinephrine release was not there. When there was no release of norepinephrine, what was happening that these post synaptic receptors, they were not functioning. They were not getting any norepinephrine. When this post synaptic receptors were not getting norepinephrine, their number gradually increased. When they were not working, they were hungry for norepinephrine, their number increased. Okay. So can we say they became more sensitive now because they were not working? Okay. Now you have stopped clonidine suddenly. When you have clobbed, stopped clonidine suddenly, there is massive release of norepinephrine. Due to massive release of norepinephrine and postsynaptic receptor, the blood pressure will shoot up. Which postsynaptic receptor? Alpha 1, alpha 2 B, they increase BP. So you will write, why it leads to rebound hypertensive crisis? You will write first point due to super sensitivity, due to super sensitivity of post synaptic receptors. There will be sudden increase in BP. Okay. Super sensitivity of post synaptic receptor and second massive norepinephrine release. So when you will stop clonidine suddenly due to super sensitivity of post synaptic receptor and massive release of norepinephrine, it will lead to rebound hypertension patient may die suddenly. So never stop clonidine suddenly in your patient. So what you will do? Always taper them gradually. Always taper gradually. So always taper of clonidine gradually. So you will write, we never stop clonidine suddenly. We taper of clonidine gradually. Okay. We taper of clonidine gradually. Okay, so I hope you have understood this part. Now last drug, then I'll give you a break. Alpha methyl dopa. Okay, let's talk about the last drug that is alpha methyl dopa. So just a second. Just a second.
Okay, what we will do? We will take a two minutes break right now. We are taking two minutes break right now. Okay, some we will check everything technically. So we are taking two minutes break now. After break, we will discuss about alpha methyl dopa, a very small drug. Okay, false neurotransmitter hypothesis. is not valid in your books it is written it act as a false neurotransmitter no the action you just have to remember this line you don't have to remember this line you will find something in your book forget it don't give attention to that part so what is the action so what is the action it is an alpha 2 agonist second point m for you will write mothers now why mothers you will write alpha methyl dopa is the drug of choice for chronic hypertension in pregnancy it is given in mothers why because it is given in pregnant mothers it is the drug of choice to treat chronic hypertension in pregnancy okay and lastly d d is for their side effect d is for their side effects you will write it causes depression it causes drug induced lupus which is known as dle you will learn what is dle in pathology okay and lastly you will write that it also damage rbc how it damages rbc this question is asked suppose sir this is an rbc it will lead to production of antibodies and these antibodies will damage rbc okay it leads to auto antibody production because of this reason it will lead to you will write it leads to warm antibody hemolytic anemia warm antibody hemolytic anemia okay warm antibody hemolytic anemia in warm antibody hemolytic anemia you detect antibody by a test known as coombs test so coombs test will be positive coombs test will be positive so these three points you have to remember with alpha methyl dopa alpha for it is it is an alpha 2 agonist okay it doesn't act as a false neurotransmitter second point it is used in mothers that is chronic hypertension in pregnancy and side effect is d so the first letter of each these drug will tell you about the action and the side effect of the drug okay so it is an alpha 2 a agonist just like clonidine first word alpha second it is used in mothers chronic hypertension in pregnancy chronic hypertension and d for alpha methyl dopa d for d depression dle damage rbc damage rbc means some antibody induced hemolytic anemia in antibody production coombs test become positive okay coombs test become positive okay what is false neuro uh, uh, hypothesis see it is not a valid hypothesis you don't have to remember this okay you don't have to remember this what you have to remember is this point okay now what we have written that alpha methyl dopa that we have written for chronic hypertension in pregnancy the drug of choice is alpha methyl dopa why because it is the safest drug in pregnancy
बट इफ अ क्वेश्चन कम्स इफ अ क्वेश्चन कम्स प्रेगनेंसी इंड्यूस्ड हाइपरटेंशन दिस कंडीशन इज ऑल्सो नोन एज प्री एक्लेम्सिया ओके हेयर द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस यू विल राइट इज लेबिटलॉन ओके नाउ वट डू यू मीन बाय दिस वर्ड लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दिस पार्ट सपोज देर इज अ फीमेल हु इज हाइपर टेंसिव देर इज अ फीमेल हु इज हाइपर टेंसिव दैट हाइपर टेंसिव फीमेल बिकम्स प्रेगनेंट दैट कंडीशन इज नोन एज क्रॉनिक हाइपर टेंशन इन प्रेगनेंसी वट इज पी आई एच प्रेगनेंसी इंड्यूस हाइपर टेंशन a normal female after pregnancy due to pregnancy changes becomes hypertensive so that is labitalon okay that is labitalon and you will write that labitalon is the overall drug of choice for hypertension in pregnancy labitalon is the overall drug of choice for hypertension in pregnancy now what is labitalol i will tell you later on okay okay again labitalol is the drug of choice for all hypertensive emergency pih labitalol okay so what is that we will discuss in cvs now this completes our central sympatholytic now what we have to learn before going further this completes your central sympatholytic okay now before starting alpha blocker and beta blocker let's learn one concept of physiology let's one learn the concept of physiology and that concept is a very important point beta magnesium sulfate is given for eclampsia that is scissors due to hypertension okay not increase in bp rohan behel okay central sympatholytic they stimulate alpha 2a receptor reduce norepinephrine discharge i will repeat everything after the end of the class okay for a moment let's continue and in physiology we will learn the effect of catecholamines on heart rate and blood pressure the effect of catecholamines of on heart rate and blood pressure we will discuss beta four drugs we will discuss four drug this is very important for you on the left side you will write four drugs the first drug you will write is norepinephrine you will write norepinephrine leave three lines leave three lines then you will write epinephrine leave three lines now you will write epinephrine okay after norepinephrine you will write epinephrine leave three lines then you will write isoprenaline isoprenaline okay and last drug you will write is last drug you will write is phenylephrine leave three lines okay last drug you will write is phenylephrine so these four drugs we will discuss this is a very important part it's a very conceptual part let's understand this part okay so above now you will write here blood pressure here you will write blood pressure and here you will write heart rate okay so now you will write what will happen to blood pressure and what will happen to heart rate okay bp and heart rate okay now just think logically and tell me on our blood vessels on our blood vessels 
विच रिसेप्टर प्रोड्यूसेस वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन और इंक्रीज इन बीपी एल्फा एल्फा वन एंड एल्फा टू बी एल्फा कॉजेस वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन एंड बीटा टू कॉजेस वेजो डायलेशन beta 2 causes vasodilatation if you remember that part agree yes or no very good now norepinephrine acts on all receptors alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 3 but not beta 2 norepinephrine does not act on which receptor norepinephrine does not act on which receptor beta 2 so tell me when you will give norepinephrine what will happen to blood pressure there is increase in blood pressure why because of alpha stimulation because of alpha stimulation yes or no because of alpha stimulation epinephrine act on all receptors alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 epinephrine act on all receptors can you tell me what will happen to bp do you agree with this point do you agree with this point vasodilatation will reduce bp okay vaso constriction will increase bp absolutely fine next is isoprenaline isoprenaline acts on beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 what will happen no alpha action okay phenylephrine the last one will act on alpha 1 only it acts on alpha 1 only alpha 1 only i hope it's simple to you i hope it's simple to you any difficulty in this any difficulty in this part now let's come to heart rate let's come to heart rate if you talk about heart rate there are two types of heart rate one is direct heart rate one is direct heart rate because of which receptor stimulation beta 1 stimulation due to which receptor stimulation beta 1 stimulation and we know that beta 1 increases heart rate beta 1 increases heart rate and second you will write is reflex heart rate very important for you reflex heart rate now remember reflex heart rate depends upon bp reflex heart rates depend upon bp okay you know that heart contains beta 1 receptor you know that heart contains beta 1 receptor yes or no okay and reflex heart rate depends upon bp now remember a very important point remember that if there is vasodilation or fallen bp will cause reflex tachycardia increase in heart rate so you will write if there is vasodilatation so i am writing here that if there is yeah it came vasodilatation or decrease in bp if there is decrease in bp body will try to increase heart rate to compensate for that and similarly you will write if there is vaso constriction that means increase in bp will cause reflex 
ब्रेडी कार्डिया दैट मीन्स डिक्रीज इन हार्ट रेट सो दे बोथ एक्ट ऑपोजिट टू ईच अदर दे बोथ एक्ट ऑपोजिट टू ईच अदर रिमेंबर दिस कंसेप्ट फर्स्ट ओके रिमेंबर दिस कंसेप्ट फर्स्ट ओके रिमेंबर दिस कंसेप्ट फर्स्ट नाउ वी विल राइट दैट जस्ट अ मोमेंट just a moment remember this concept now let's see what will happen to the heart rate when you will give this drug okay let's talk about what about tell me tell me what about the heart rate with norepinephrine and epinephrine and isoprenaline can we say they all act on beta 1 receptor they all act on beta 1 receptor and they will increase heart rate norepinephrine epinephrine and isoprenaline they all act on beta 1 receptor on heart and they will increase heart rate what about isoprenaline isoprenaline will have no effect isoprenaline will have no effect on heart because it does not act on beta 1 receptor norepinephrine does not act on beta 1 receptor now tell me that norepinephrine will cause reflex bradycardia reflex bradycardia can you tell me the reason why 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 because because nor epinephrine produces vasoconstriction okay because of this vasoconstriction it will lead to bradycardia okay ice nor epinephrine no effect because it leads to vasoconstriction as well as vasodilatation it will cancel each other it produces both vasoconstriction and vasodilatation it will cancel each other isoprenaline produces reflex tachycardia isoprenaline will produce reflex tachycardia because of vasodilation norepinephrine because of vasoconstriction and what about phenylephrine phenylephrine because of vasoconstriction will produce reflex bradycardia because of vasoconstriction phenylephrine will produce bradycardia you are absolutely right now i will ask you question depending upon this chart okay remember these four options will be given in your mcq okay and now you will tell me the answer for these question okay write this part now <coughs> tell me the answer for this question the first question i want to ask you is which drug which drug causes maximum tachycardia which drug causes maximum tachycardia among these four drug what is your answer what is your answer which drug causes maximum tachycardia both direct and reflex tachycardia this is the first question maximum tachycardia is by isoprenaline and i have already told you yesterday isoprenaline is given for the treatment of bradycardia okay isoprenaline was given for the treatment of bradycardia which drug which drug has 
नो इफेक्ट ऑन हार्ट डायरेक्टली बट स्टिल कॉजेस ब्रेडी कार्डिया विच ड्रग हैज नो इफेक्ट ऑन हार्ट डायरेक्टली बट स्टिल कॉजेस ब्रेडी कार्डिया आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज फिनाइलेफरीन ओके द आंसर इज फिनाइल एफरीन ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नॉर एपीनेफरीन इन नॉर्मल पेशेंट नॉर एपीनेफरीन इन नॉर्मल पेशेंट कॉजेस ब्रेडी कार्डिया वाई वाई इट कॉजेस ब्रेडी कार्डिया नॉर एपीनेफरीन इन नॉर्मल पेशेंट कॉजेस ब्रेडी कार्डिया ओके इट कॉजेस ब्रेडी कार्डिया लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वाई बिकॉज इट कॉजेस ब्रेडी कार्डिया Let's understand why. Because reflex is predominant. Over direct heart rate. Because reflex is predominant over is predominant over direct heart rate okay reflex is strong now tell me in transplanted heart in transplanted heart do you think any reflex activity will come from the brain is there any nerve supply which is increasing or decreasing heart rate in a transplanted heart tell me that in transplanted heart nor epinephrine will produce bradycardia or tachycardia here nor epinephrine produces tachycardia here nor epinephrine will produce tachycardia why because there is no reflex nerve supply from cns because there is no reflex nerve supply from cns so it will only produce direct increase in heart rate due to which receptor direct receptor increase in heart rate is because of beta 1 receptor so this question has been asked many times this question of nor epinephrine has been asked many times that nor epinephrine in a normal person produces bradycardia while in a transplanted heart patient produces tachycardia while in a transplanted heart patient it produces tachycardia and the last drug we will write is epinephrine last drug we will write is epinephrine okay so you will write epinephrine or adrenaline one and the same thing epinephrine or adrenaline okay okay now epinephrine and adrenaline you will write it shows biphasic change in bp
biphasic change in BP. That means if you will give intravenous epinephrine, it will lead to increase and decrease in BP. It means when you give when you give intravenous epinephrine, it will lead to increase and decrease in BP. Increase in BP is because of alpha stimulation and decrease in BP is because of beta 2 stimulation. Increase in BP is because of alpha stimulation. Decrease in BP will be because of will be because of beta 2 stimulation. Now tell me one very important point. Tell me that if you give if you give alpha blocker if you give alpha blocker see this part that if you give a patient just a moment. Now tell me that if you give a patient alpha blocker with epinephrine, what will happen to the BP? Okay. What will happen to the BP? Can we say it will lead to fall in BP? Why? Because this wave will not come. This wave will not come. Yes or no? This wave will not come. So can we say that alpha blocker, alpha blocker with epinephrine leads to unopposed fall in BP. It leads to unopposed fall in BP. Do you agree with this point? Unopposed fall in BP due to beta 2 action. Due to beta 2 action. This property is known as vasomotor reversal of Dale. Vasomotor means blood pressure. Blood pressure has been reversed. Do you agree with this point? Do you agree with this point? So tell me vasomotor reversal of Dale is shown by alpha blocker with epinephrine. It is shown by alpha blockers with epinephrine. Just tell me one point. Think about and lo think logically and tell me. Will there will be fall in BP with norepinephrine? What do you think? If you will give alpha blocker with norepinephrine, if you give alpha blocker with norepinephrine, will there be fall in BP? What do you think? Will there be any fall in BP? The answer is no. So vasomotor reversal of Dale is shown by epinephrine. It is not shown by nor epinephrine. Because with nor epinephrine, there is no beta 2 action. There will be no fall in BP. So fall in BP is only by epinephrine. So this vasomotor reversal of Dale you will write is used to differentiate between epinephrine and norepinephrine. This property 
is used to distinguish this property of vasomotor reversal of Dale is used to differentiate between two solution whether this solution is epinephrine or this solution is not epinephrine we can differentiate by giving an alpha blocker okay very good now the last point you will write if you will give beta blocker with epinephrine if you will give beta blocker with epinephrine there will be only increase in bp only increase in bp so there will be unopposed increase in bp why because of alpha stimulation because of alpha stimulation this property is known as vasomotor re reversal of dale vasomotor re reversal of dale it has no significance it has no significance okay it has no significance i hope you have understood the last part so it is known as re re means again the bp is increasing okay re means again the bp is increasing re reversal of day so this completes our today's lecture tomorrow we will be finishing with alpha and beta blockers and our ans part will be finished so last 5 minutes let's revise what we have learned in 5 minutes let's revise what we have learned today okay so let's come let's come to our first page come beta first page okay that's great you learned a lot okay so open your notebooks open the first page open the first page everyone first slide those who have missed can write now yes practically ajay kumar reddy i will tell you that in pheochromocytoma i will tell you what is the importance of tomorrow i will tell you in pheochromocytoma there is an importance of vasomotor reversal of dale and re reversal of dale okay we give alpha blocker and beta blocker as a drug we will discuss this vasomotor reversal of dale and re reversal property tomorrow in very much great detail again so we started today with adrenergic drug two types indirectly mixed indirectly increase the release mixed acting increase the release as well as they cause they are receptor agonist okay drugs are mat and me modafinil amphetamine tyramine mifentermine and ephedrine how do they cause release they go into the nerve reverse diffusion and they cause displacement and they will cause release of norepinephrine and dopamine these drugs they show rapid loss of effect why because of depletion of stores this rapid loss of effect is known as rapid tolerance or it is also known as tachyphylaxis very commonly asked question market tachyphylaxis market question will come tachyphylaxis indirectly complete tachyphylaxis mixed acting incomplete tachyphylaxis because they have a little bit receptor action also so the drugs are modafinil modafinil new drug is r r is r and s an enantiomer you remember they are r and s an enantiomer now it is oral good penetration it is given for day time sleepiness if a person is having day time sleepiness you give modafinil like remember the word narcolepsy very commonly asked remember the word narcolepsy don't confuse with narco analysis some student was asking me narco analysis was different thing narco analysis means truth serum narcolepsy means day time sleepiness okay shift worker obstructive sleep apnea okay amphetamines it is also a group again it has more action on cns it is known as cns stimulant very good and just think logically 
if you have CNS stimulant action, what will happen? Decrease sleep, decrease appetite, increase attention span. Because of this reason, they are the drug of choice for ADHD. This question comes. They are the drug of choice for ADHD. Okay. Decrease sleep, narcolepsy, appetite, anti-obesity. And which amphetamine is considered as a drug of choice for ADHD? Tell me that answer. Among amphetamine, the drug of choice for ADHD is methylphenidate methylphenidate okay other drugs are also there they end with the word amphetamine ectomoxetine a n t adhd with torrid syndrome clonidine and tor uh, this uh, clonidine is also adhd and torrid they are not stimulant drug they have a calming effect on a person okay they have a calming effect next side effect of amphetamine psychosis arrhythmias scissors drug of abuse what smugglers call them as ecstasy rave drug crystal see a movie breaking bad you will find methamphetamine and mdma next performance enhancing drug bands in sport you can you will have a very good concentration span you can wish beat vishwanathan anand in chess because you will have a very good concentration amphetamine poisoning increase in sympathetic discharge psychosis golden color urine okay now drug of choice ammonium chloride please mark very commonly asked question ammonium chloride why ammonium chloride is acidic molecule we given basic drug poisoning amphetamine is a basic drug basic drug in acidic media become water soluble if they become water soluble they will be easily excreted out in urine chlorpromazine can be given to treat psychosis and alpha blocker anti obesity drug list is given to you just have this list for reference we will discuss this drug later on reference let's move ahead tyramine tyramine is not a drug it is present in food item suppose you are in italy eating a pizza with a very good glass of wine okay the tyramine which presents normally will not enter to your body why because you have a very strong mau enzyme but if you are taking mau inhibitor tyramine will come into the blood tyramine will release norepinephrine from the nerves bp will shoot up suddenly this condition is known as cheese reaction this condition is known as cheese reaction okay so drug of choice for cheese reaction is fentolamine block the receptors of norepinephrine bp will not increase mefentermine approved anti obesity drug and vasopressor like phenylephrine okay ephedrine nasal decongestant and again vasopressor like phenylephrine nowadays we don't use in asthma one student was asking me okay now modified form are also used as a nasal decongestant but among them one drug has been banned that drug was nor ephedrine or phenyl propanolamine the bp was getting shoot up and the person was having hemorrhagic stroke okay person was having hemorrhagic stroke let's talk about now central sympatho anti adrenergic drug they are known as sympatholytic drug so first is central sympatholytic which we have discussed today tomorrow we will be starting with alpha blocker and beta blocker tomorrow we will be starting with them central sympatholytic central sympatholytic they act in brain and they stimulate one receptor alpha 2a receptor very commonly asked question alpha 2a receptor is present in pre synaptic neuron if you stimulate this receptor the norepinephrine or catecholamines will not be released auto receptor it will apply a break sir please don't get release hence sympathetic discharge will reduce from the brain okay hence they are known as as the name implies central because they are acting in cns sympatholytics because they reduce sympathetic discharge what are the drugs cd tag clonidine dexmedetomidine tizanidine alpha methyl dopa guanfacine and guanbenz dexmedetomidine iv sedation tizanidine muscle relaxant guanfacine longest and torrid syndrome clonidine clonidine also act on i2 receptor apart from this it reduces central sympathetic discharge it can be given oral iv as well as transdermal patch 
इट्स अ नैरो दैट मींस लो थेरापेटिक इंडेक्स मींस सेफ्टी मार्जिन एंड एनी ड्रग व्हिच हैज अ नैरो सेफ्टी मार्जिन रिक्वायर्स मॉनिटरिंग ओके हाउ वी विल डू मॉनिटरिंग वी विल डिस्कस इन जनरल फार्मा ओके नाउ यूजेस पहले हल्का करो दिमाग पोस्ट मेनोपॉजल हॉट फ्लैशेस हाइपरटेंशन कंट्रोल विड्रॉवल ऑफ एनी ड्रग ऑफ अब्यूज डायबिटिक डायरिया रीजन वी हैव रिटर्न एपिड्यूरल एनलजेसिक माइग्रेन प्रोफाइल एक्सिस एडीएचडी एंड टॉरिट सिंड्रोम ओके साइड इफेक्ट हाथ से हाइपोटेंशन एपनिया ड्राई आइज ड्राई माउथ सिडेशन एंड इरेक्टाइल डिसफंक्शन क्लोनिडीन शुड नॉट बी गिवन इन चिल्ड्रन लेस देन टू ईयर्स ऑफ एज बिकॉज ऑफ द रिस्क ऑफ एपनिया Never stop clonidine suddenly because it will lead to sudden release of norepinephrine and postsynaptic receptors are super sensitive because they haven't act for a very long duration of time it will lead to sudden shoot up of bp just like cheese reaction there will be hypertensive crisis just like cheese reaction you will give the same drug fentolamine so second use of fentolamine is cheese reaction second use is clonidine stoppage alpha methyl dopa alpha alpha 2 agonist methyl mothers dopa depression dle and damage rbc there is antibody production against rbc and coom test will be positive it is given for chronic hypertension in pregnancy but if it is hypertension due to pregnancy or pregnancy induced hypertension which is also known as preeclampsia you give labitalol overall if somebody will ask you what is the drug of choice for just hypertension in pregnancy nothing is mentioned you will go by the answer labitalol because it is given everywhere in pregnancy okay then physiology of catecholamine norepinephrine epinephrine isoprenaline and epinephrine norepinephrine increases bp epinephrine has a biphasic response because it act on alpha and beta 2 norepinephrine only increases bp because it doesn't have beta 2 action isoprenaline only reduces bp because it doesn't have alpha action isoprenephrine increases bp and we have discussed what effect they will produce on heart rate okay so this is the four points we have learned today maximum tachycardia isoprenaline no effect on heart but still causes reflex bradycardia that is phenylephrine norepinephrine in a normal person causes bradycardia transplanted heart patient causes tachycardia why in normal heart patient it causes bradycardia because reflex activity is always predominant over direct heart rate okay why isoprenaline will increase heart rate okay beta see beta it has beta 1 action isoprenaline so direct beta 1 action will increase direct heart rate it produces vasodilatation vasodilatation will also increase heart rate vasodilatation will also increase reflex tachycardia will occur so isoprenaline both directly and reflexly increases heart rate so the best drug to increase heart rate is isoprenaline okay very good now last point is what is vasomotor reversal of dale vasomotor reversal of dale for that first we should know epinephrine shows biphasic response in bp biphasic means first there is an alpha stimulation then there is a beta 2 stimulation if you will give alpha blocker there will be fall in bp if you will give beta blocker there will be rise in bp this fall in bp is known as vasomotor reversal of dale it is shown by epinephrine but not by norepinephrine hence it is given to distinguish and re reversal is opposite beta blocker with epinephrine it doesn't have any much significance and this completes our today's lecture okay oh so i hope you have enjoyed so you have any queries you can post on the club beta reflex action yes it depends upon the dose but uh, overall action you should remember you don't have to remember the dose yes tomorrow we will discuss question that alpha risk blocker with 
alpha blocker with epinephrine will cause fall in bp it may lead to hypotension yes you are absolutely right you are absolutely right absolutely right how clonidine causes erectile dysfunction the reason is today yesterday i told you yesterday i told you sympathetic gang with ganglionic blocker erection and ejaculation they are carried carried out by sympathetic and parasympathetic if you reduce parasympathetic activity sympathetic activity there will be impotency tomorrow we will discuss even in more great detail how impotency occurs okay anti obesity drug slide you want to see have this slide so beta this is the slide don't have to remember just have this for your reference <clears throat> in transplanted heart norepinephrine will increase blood pressure because there will be no reflex bradycardia there will be only direct tachycardia because of beta 1 stimulation beta see either epinephrine will increase bp or decrease bp but what you have to remember that epinephrine will show biphasic response it will show biphasic response it may increase bp it may decrease bp because it act on both receptor what is the dose you don't have to go into that detail okay that depends upon many factors okay mao inhibitors don't worry about mao inhibitors we will discuss mao inhibitor in cns also so if you want to see the slide of mao inhibitor you can write like this so this is the slide of mao inhibitor but nobody will ask you uh, just a moment norepinephrine increases blood pressure due to alpha mediated vasoconstriction norepinephrine increases blood pressure because of alpha mediated vasoconstriction okay yes 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 the blood pressure we are talking about is always mean arterial pressure okay whenever we write up only word bp you will learn in physiology it always means mean arterial pressure and mean arterial pressure you know is mainly depend mainly dependent upon diastolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure means peripheral blood vessels and we have drawn peripheral blood vessels in our diagram okay but a cheese reaction is very simple when you eat cheese there is tyramine normally tyramine doesn't come in your blood because in your git you have mao enzyme so if you inhibit mao enzyme by mao inhibitor what will happen these mao inhibitors this tyramine will be absorbed into the blood when it will come into the blood it will release norepinephrine it's an indirectly acting sympathetic drug bp will shoot up to reduce this bp we give phentolamine so cheese reaction is food containing tyramine with mao inhibitors okay only this line you have to remember Remona band is beta agonist. Uh, sorry, Remona band. Remona band is antagonist. CB1 antagonist. How to remember? Remona band. Band means ANT means antagonist. Okay. I hope we have written. Okay. I hope we have written agonist. Okay. Sorry, I am really sorry. Please write it as antagonist. We have already written antagonist earlier also. How to remember? ANT means antagonist. Okay, you can correct it. Antagonist. Bhavani Shankar. Bant means yes. You are absolutely right. Thanks for correcting. Bant is ANT means antagonist. You are absolutely right. What is MDMA? Full form is beta. Not important for you. But if you want to remember the full form, MDMA is methylene dioxy meth amphetamine. it's a type of amphetamine only you don't have to remember the full form central sympatholytic beta they will reduce sympathetic discharge from neurons 
एंड विच रिसेप्टर वॉर प्रेजेंट ऑन प्री साइनेप्टिक न्यूरोन एल्फा टू ए रिसेप्टर इफ यू रिमेंबर यू रिमेंबर एल्फा टू ए रिसेप्टर सो दिस इज अ वेरी सिंपल थिंग ओके आई होप इट सिंपल नाउ फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस डायग्राम सेंट्रल सिंपथोलाइटेक सी दिस डायग्राम beta imidazoline is a type of some chemical what is imidazoline let's leave for that moment at your level you don't have to remember okay i will tell you about imidazoline receptors more in cardiovascular system there are two drugs which act on imidazoline receptors we will discuss them in hypertension chapter okay we will discuss those drugs in anti hypertensive drug those drugs will be moxonidine and relminidine beta let's leave imidazoline for a moment what i have told you learn that concept for a moment what is imidazoline nobody will ask you don't get more burdened with tomorrow we will discuss how penile erection occurs impotency occur and priapism occurs so tomorrow we will discuss with alpha blocker and beta blocker tomorrow we will also discuss certain drugs for impotency treatment you can write remona band as antagonist okay don't write as an inverse agonist okay write it as antagonist rebound hypertension means due to sudden stoppage of drug normally bp was less when you stop the drug the bp will this is normal bp when you are giving a drug bp is low when you suddenly stop the drug it will increase 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 and it will further increase it will shoot up this is known as rebound more than normal it will go this is normal bp you are giving clonidine bp is low clonidine is given for the treatment of hypertension so bp is low when you stop stop clonidine the bp will rather shoot up this is known as rebound increase okay rebound increase clonidine causes dry eyes and dry mouth because of some sympathetic cholinergic nerves amphetamines were approved for anti obesity but now they have been banned now they have been banned because they produce cardiac valvular defects no amphetamines are not approved for obesity now they are dangerous drugs ultimate net effect of isoprenaline is decrease in blood pressure But because of beta 2 action the blood pressure will reduce but the heart rate will increase with isoprenaline shaikh mohammed ahmed shaikh ahmed i hope the question is clear now please don't type again i have told you rebound hypertension also cd tag okay so this is cd tag beta transdermal drugs patch list we will discuss in general pharma okay when i will tell you about what do you mean by transdermal patches how do they act right now don't write the list shaikh ahmed i have already answered your question please don't type again tachyphylaxis beta means rapid loss of effect rebound hypertension means sudden shoot up of bp why because of super sensitivity the receptors are very much sensitive they will work more than normal normally they increase bp up to let's say 150 because now they are super sensitive they were not acting for very long duration of time now they will lead to bp they will increase the bp up to 200 so they will lead to sudden shoot up of bp more than normal this is known as rebound increase बीपी जरूरत से ज्यादा बढ़ जाएगा वाई एपिनेफ्रीन फर्स्ट इंक्रीज इन राइस सी वेन यू गिव एपिनेफ्रीन वेन यू गिव एपिनेफ्रीन एपिनेफ्रीन इन हाई डोस एपिनेफ्रीन इन हाई डोस स्टिमुलेट्स एल्फा रिसेप्टर 
in low dose epinephrine stimulate beta 2 receptor so when you have given epinephrine injection initially the concentration will be high first alpha will be stimulated and in low dose beta 2 will be stimulated why because alpha are less sensitive beta 2 are more sensitive more sensitive means they are only stimulated at low concentration less sensitive means they are stimulated at high concentration okay beta heart will have uh, beta nor epinephrine see this is heart heart has beta 1 receptor and heart has uh, nerve supply reflex when you give nor epinephrine nor epinephrine can directly act on heart also and nor epinephrine can act from reflex bradycardia in a transplanted heart remember this nerve supply is not there in transplanted heart patient the nerve supply on the heart is not there but when you will give nor epinephrine nor epinephrine present in blood can directly go to the heart and it can directly increase heart rate so in a normal person it will cause reflex bradycardia but in a transplanted heart it will produce direct tachycardia direct tachycardia will there will be reflex tachycardia in vasomotor reversal of dale yes beta uh, allen daniel yes it will cause reflex tachycardia you are right tomorrow we will discuss when we will discuss alpha blocker i will tell you the same point again i will tell you the same point again tomorrow when we will start with alpha blocker and beta blocker okay so you can ask me all your remaining doubts on dams exclusive club okay so all remaining doubts you can ask me on club so this was the first slide there is a little modification between mdma and methamphetamine okay almost they are same so Yes, beta, you are absolutely right. Vishnu, you are absolutely right. Vishnu Kiran, but you don't have to go into that detail. What you are thinking is absolutely right. Yes, Kishan Girish, what you are thinking is absolutely right. You are absolutely right. But don't go into that detail. Okay. Shrine Advait Vyas, alpha 2A receptor leads to decrease release of norepinephrine. Okay, decrease release from nerves, presynaptic nerves. Shrine, Shrinje, Shrinje, it will decrease the release of norepinephrine. Yes, epinephrine in low dose has more beta 2 action, high dose has alpha action. Yes. See, Tanya Roy, when we have to give a drug, you will learn in surgery that depends upon body mass index and that depends upon comorbid condition. Then we start generally anti obesity drug, but nowadays better treatment is surgery. Bariatric surgeries are there, which is a better treatment for treat for obesity. Drugs are not very good. We prefer to do surgery. We reduce the size of the stomach and length of the intestine. So bariatric surgeries are done for treatment of obesity nowadays. You must have seen very old old people in two, three months, they have become very slim. Okay. No drug can make you such a slim in such a short duration of time. Why alpha methyl dopa is only given for chronic hypertension because it is not as effective as labitalol. Labitalol is more effective drug. 
That is why labetalol is more preferred in hypertension in pregnancy. Yes, alpha blocker given to norepinephrine will reduce BP. You are absolutely right, beta. Nikhil Bissain, you are absolutely right that when norep uh, when norep we give alpha blocker with norepinephrine, don't you think the BP will not increase? Norepinephrine produces effect like this, norepinephrine, and epinephrine produces effect like this. Okay, now when you will give alpha blocker. When you will give alpha blocker, what will happen with norepinephrine normal line and what will happen to epinephrine this line. So can you tell me in which condition the BP will fall down? The BP will fall down with epinephrine. Agreed? With norepinephrine, there will be no change in BP. With norepinephrine, there will be no change in BP. First we give alpha blocker, then we add norepinephrine. No change in BP. First we give alpha blocker, then we give epinephrine, there will be fall in BP. Fall means reversal, vasomotor reversal. Okay, I hope you have understood. Reverse diffusion means it is going into the nerve. Displacement means it is displacing the stores of catecholamines which are getting released. Yes, they are banned and if you are found selling it, Deepshika Parashar, MDM and methamphetamines are banned and if you are taking it, you will get jailed also. You will go to prison. So unless a person is in terminal life, he or she should not consume MDM or methamphetamine. I hope everything is clear. So let's end our lecture out here on a good note. Go back, keep revising your notes, revise your notes, then ask doubts that will be better. First, read the notes, then ask me the doubts. That will be much better for you. Because when you will read the notes, most of your questions will get automatically solved. Automatically solved. Okay. Yes, labetalol is used in chronic hypertension also. It is used in chronic hypertension also, Priyadarshini. But... You, you will learn in gyneops what causes chronic hypertension and what causes pregnancy induced hypertension then you will appreciate. We will discuss this topic hypertension in pregnancy when we will discuss cardiovascular system or hypertension part. Then I will tell you a little bit difference between hyper what do you mean by chronic hypertension? What do you mean by pregnancy induced hypertension? They both are different thing. Okay. Hetero receptor beta means different receptor, nothing else. Like alpha and beta, they both are different receptor for epinephrine. So this is hetero, hetero means different. Uththala, Bhargavi, succinylcholine and neostigmine we will discuss in skeletal muscle relaxant. That's a part of somatic nervous system, not autonomic nervous system. Where in brain, clonidine act, it act on multiple area, which you don't have to remember, but basically RAS, reticular activating system, or you will write medullary area, clonidine act on medullary area. But no one will ask you this point. It has other actions also in brain. Presynaptic nerves release neurotransmitter. Whether it is acetylcholine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, etc. Presynaptic means synapse is the junction between two organs. Presynaptic means nerves. Postsynaptic means organs. Okay. Okay. So this is a slide after clonidine. Yes, rebound hypertension is seen with many drugs, Shakuntala Devi, many drugs. Don't worry about that. We will discuss many drugs which show rebound hypertension. Even beta blockers will show rebound hypertension. 
Alpha blockers also show rebound hypertension. Don't have to remember about imidazoline. I have already told you Neha. What is imidazoline? Don't remember for that a moment. Don't go into that detail. That will not help you anywhere. What is imidazoline? Irrelevant for you. Prazosin, yes, you can give prazosin in cheese reaction, but remember the drug we use is fentolamine. Because prazosin only blocks alpha 1 receptor. Fentolamine blocks both alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptor. Okay, so it's better to give fentolamine. Yes, reflex is predominant. Jitendra. Yes, Kishan Girish, Adoria, Ado, Kishan Girish, yes. Alpha blocker with norepinephrine, tachycardia occurs. See, tachycardia will not occur. Okay. The reason is tachycardia is because of your, yes, tachycardia will occur. Yes, Kishan Girish, you're absolutely right. I have understood your question, but don't go have to go into that complexities. Okay. It will lead to tachycardia. Kishan Girish, you're right. Drug for narcolepsy, we will discuss later. There are two more drugs for narcolepsy. One drug you have learned today among narcolepsy drug is modafinil. There are two more drugs which we will discuss later on. Two new drugs are there, but drug of choice for narcolepsy is modafinil. The complete list we will discuss later on. Does SGLT2 inhibitor block reduces obesity? Yes, they, they cause weight loss, but they are not approved as an anti-obesity drug. Certain anti-diabetic drugs, they produce weight loss, but among them only one liraglutide is approved as an anti-obesity drug. No other drug among diabetes is approved as an anti-obesity drug. Okay. Only liraglutide. Okay. Chaliye, let's goodbye till tomorrow.